Today, let's talk about how you can use seventh chords to play real bluegrass banjo. But real quick, before we get started, do me a huge favor and subscribe to this channel and like this video. It's a really great way to support the work that I do here, and it's one of the things that makes these videos possible. And I'll also say that if you want the tablature for all of the licks in this video, then you should head to patreon.com slash Eli Gilbert Banjo. That's where you can get the tablature for all of my lessons, as well as bonus practice tips and live streams, all kinds of stuff that you can't find here on YouTube. Anyway, the first thing you need to know about seventh chords in bluegrass is that there are a lot of different types of seventh chords, and they all sound different, and they all have different uses. But in bluegrass, we really only need one type of seventh chord, and that's the dominant seventh chord. And I'm certainly not saying that you can't use all the different types of seventh chords in bluegrass, but if you listen to players like Earl Scruggs or J.D. Crow or Ralph Stanley, you're predominantly going to hear one type of seventh chord, and that's the dominant seventh chord. And if you don't know already, a dominant seventh chord is just a major triad with the addition of a minor or a flat seventh. We are going to talk about a little music theory in this lesson, and it's just to give some context to why these sounds sound the way they do, and how we can describe them in order to use them in different keys. But if that's not helpful to you, then that's okay. That doesn't necessarily mean that you can't use these licks or these sounds. Just keep an open mind, and your understanding of all this material will grow over time. There's a couple different ways that we can think about building these chords, but for now let's make it as simple as possible. The minor, or flat 7, is located one whole step or two frets below the root of the chord. So if we want G dominant 7th, then we're going to take a G triad, and then we're going to find the note that's one whole step or two frets below G, which in this case is F. And if you want D dominant seventh, then you're going to take your D chord and find the note that's two frets below D, which is C. And if you want C dominant seventh, then you're going to take your C chord and you're going to find the note that's one whole step below C, which is B flat. And you can refer to these chords as G dominant 7, and D dominant 7, and C dominant 7, but for the most part, people just called them G7, D7, and C7. So when it comes to actually using these chords in bluegrass, there's an easy answer, and there's a slightly more complicated answer. The easy answer is that you can turn any major chord into a dominant 7th chord. But let's look at some specific examples and talk about what's really happening when we add a 7th to a chord. First, let's look at what happens when you move from a 5 chord to a 1 chord. In the key of G, that would be moving from a D to a G. One of the fundamental principles of chord progressions in Western music is that certain chords just feel like they want to move to certain other chords. For instance, when I play something like this, the D chord at the end of the progression really feels like it should end up at G. And until I actually play G, there's a lot of tension. It doesn't feel like the progression is over yet. Part of the reason that it feels like this is because the F sharp, the third of the D chord, is so close to G that for it to travel the short distance it would have to to get to G, it actually pulls your ear towards that resolution. And this is true in any key. The third of the five chord feels like it should resolve to the root of the one chord. Now, if we add the seventh to that D chord, which is C, then we'll be increasing the tension. It sounds even more like it wants to go to G. And notice that the seventh, C, is really close to B, the third of the G chord. In the same way that the F sharp feels like it wants to resolve to G, the C feels like it wants to resolve to B. And this F sharp and C, the third and seventh, is really what gives this chord its character. In fact, even if I only play F sharp and C, and then I resolve to G and B, you can hear the entire sound of the D7 chord moving to the G chord, even though I'm only playing two notes at a time. In the real world, you're not always going to have all of these notes resolving in exactly this way, but hopefully this illustrates why the dominant 7th chord feels like it wants to resolve to the 1 chord. And you can use roll patterns to play these dominant 7th chords to move from the 5 chord to the 1 chord, but again, in the real world, you're not necessarily going to see the entire chord shape the entire time. You might just see some reference to the 7th chord, or maybe even just the 7th one time. So here are some licks that you can use to go from D7 to G, and keep an eye out for C, because that's the note that's going to give these licks their 7th chord sound.
and in the key of C, here are some licks that we can use to go from G7 to C. And in the key of D, here are some licks that we can use to go from A7 to D. So that's a great start, but there are other ways that we can use dominant seventh chords in bluegrass. We can also use it to go from the one chord to the four chord. Remember that in the previous example, we went from G7 to C, and that was the five chord going to the one chord. Well, you can also use G7 to go to C in the key of G, in the movement from one to four. And that means all of the licks from the previous section going from G7 to C will also work in the key of G going from G7 to C. But here's a few more examples. And here are some more licks for going from D7 to G. And here are some licks that you can use to get from C7 to F. Okay, so there's one more way that I want to talk about using dominant seventh chords, and that's on a major chord that isn't necessarily going to any other particular chord. Another way to say that is just on any major chord. And the reason it's worth making a distinction between this type of dominant seventh chord and the chords we were looking at before is that in this case, we're just using it to color the sound of the chord that we're playing. And usually it's gonna add a bluesy influence. Whereas before we were specifically using the seventh to help us travel from one chord to another. And a lot of times you'll hear people use this on the four chord that might go back to the one chord or it might go to the five chord. It's not exactly relevant because we're not trying to move from one chord to another. We're just trying to play a more interesting sound while we're on the four chord. So you can use any of the seventh chord licks from the previous examples, but here's some classic examples from the playing of Earl Scruggs and J.D. Crow. So if you've stuck around this long, then you're probably wondering how you could win some free banjo strings. And it's easy. Assuming you're already subscribed to this channel and you've liked this video, all you have to do is comment below. And congratulations to Frank, who is the winner of last week's string giveaway. So if you want to be a winner like Frank, then make sure you are subscribed to this channel, you like this video, and you comment below. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.